extradural hematomas and subdural hematomas are two important intracranial hematomas that are sustained as a result of trauma to the head. A key means of diagnosing and assessing these injuries is by performing a CT scan of the head. Therefore, being able to interpret CT scans to diagnose and differentiate between these two clearly distinct but potentially life-threatening injuries is really important. Epidural or extradural hematomas, as the name suggests, is when bleeding and hematoma formation occurs in the extradural space between the wall of the skull and the dura mater. This most commonly occurs as a result of bleeding from the middle meningeal artery, which is a branch of the external carotid artery. The middle meningeal artery travels along the inner surface of the skull and acts as the blood supply to the dura mater. The middle meningeal artery gives off an anterior branch, which passes a longer region of the skull that is referred to as the terion. And it's this point that is located behind the temple, where the frontal, parietal, temporal, and sphenoid bones fuse. Anatomically, being the fusion point of so many bones makes the terion a relatively weak area compared to the rest of the skull. And therefore, significant trauma to this area can cause internal displacement of the bone, in turn injuring the anterior branch of the middle meningeal artery, and thus leading to bleeding into the extradural space. Now, interestingly, the anatomy of the extradural space and the fact that the dura mater actually fuses with the sutures of the skull means that the space is compartmentalized, and therefore, as the hematoma develops, it can't extend beyond these fusion points. This means that the hematoma actually bulges inwards, and we get a characteristic lenticular shape appearance on the CT scan. Moving on to subdural hematomas, as the name suggests, this bleed occurs in the space below the dura, so between the dura and the arachnoid mater. Subdural hematomas typically occur as a result of trauma causing injury to the bridging vessels which traverse this space. Now, unlike extradural or epidural hematomas, in which the spread of the hematoma is restricted by the fusion of the dura and the sutures of the skull, in subdural hematomas, they do not have this issue. And as a result, the hematoma which develops can actually spread throughout the subdural space. Typically, this results in a crescent-shaped appearing hematoma which is particularly contrasting to the lenticular-shaped extradural or epidural hematoma that we discussed earlier. So hopefully now, you'll feel more confident and better prepared to be able to diagnose and distinguish between these two important injuries. If you enjoyed watching this video, then make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel for more great free content. Or, if you want to make sure you know what you need to know for med school, then subscribe to surgicalteaching.com for more great videos, learning forums, and MCQs.